Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm Michael, you're watching In The Mix, and in this video I'm going to be showing you a subtractive EQ technique to try and help you clean up your home recordings. In this tutorial I'm going to be demonstrating this technique on a mixing job we did for a client. His name is Lucito, and I'm pretty sure I've just pronounced that wrong. He's a very talented guitar player, but his recording was a little bit subpar, and the first job we had to do was just try to make it sound a little bit more professional so that it could fit in the mix. So I'm going to show you the stems before, then after, and then I'm going to take one of them and show you exactly what was done. Because of the room or the microphone or the equipment, there's lots of resonant frequencies and just boomy and boxy stuff going on in the low mids. This is sort of a two-part technique. The first one was removing noise from the stems, and I'll link a video just here showing how to remove the noise from the stems, but this video here is all about using EQ to subtract or remove some of these bad sort of boomy frequencies. Okay, so let's get right to it. You'll need to wear headphones or listen on monitor speakers to really hear the differences in this tutorial. So what are we looking at here? We've got a load of guitar stems. There's five at the top here in light green. These are the unedited stems and the dark green ones at the bottom. These are the edited ones with the EQ and all of that stuff going on. So I'm gonna sort of switch between the two and you'll hear differences and the differences will mostly be focused in the low mids. The guitar playing itself is really, really nice to listen to, but you'll hear the difference between the two versions. One of them is just a lot more clear and a lot more focused. So let's start with the unedited ones and I'll switch between. actually look at how this was done. So I'm going to take it stem by stem. Each of the final edited stems will have a slightly different EQ profile, but the method of getting there is exactly the same. So on this channel I have a fruity parametric EQ2. Now I don't actually use this EQ when doing this technique, I prefer using other EQs where I can't necessarily see what's happening, because that way I really use my ears, but this one's really great for showing and demonstrating the technique. You will probably get better results with different EQs, but you can just test that out for yourself. Now the first thing I would do is get rid of uh, low frequency rumble, this is really common. Basically if I was to put a, uh, a low pass just here, you'll be able to hear lots of this rumbling that's just not important. Because that information isn't really doing anything, I'm just going to set a gentle high pass filter and I'm just going to have it rolling off everything below about maybe 70 or 80 hertz. Nothing too extreme there. It won't really change what it sounds like too much. And now this technique really gets going. What we do is we take these tokens in the middle and we raise them up a little bit, somewhere around about 6 dB or so. It can be anything like that, not too much. And you make the Q factor very narrow. So you make a very, very sharp point here. And what you do is you can hold control and you can sort of gently scroll from side to side. It gives you a lot of accuracy. And what we're listening for is when we play the guitar, we're just listening for frequencies that just sound really strange, like they're phasey, they're peaking, they're just, they're just, they just sound different. Everything will sound a little bit different when you put it through a, a sharp point like this, but some of the frequencies will really, really stick out. Usually when doing this technique, I would start around 400 hertz and go down because it's that sort of 100 to 400 hertz region that's going to have the most problems usually. So let's get going. Let's try this. right here. Now this is 310, 312. It's going to be different for every sample, but this one just sounds really, there's just, just resonant frequency there. I'm going to just play it one more time and hopefully you'll be able to hear what's going on there. Just on that note there. It just sounds really, really loud and resonant and not right. So I'm going to take that 310 and I'm going to just take it down a few dB and see whether it fixes it. So it's a little bit better. Let's take a listen to that in context. So that note sounds a little bit better, but there's still loads of stuff going on there that we need to fix. So I'm gonna take another uh, little token 
raise it to about 6 dB or so. Sometimes when people do this, they raise it too high and then everything sounds weird. So you end up poking lots and lots of holes. We don't want to make too many holes or this thing's going to sound a little bit, a little bit crazy. Oh, wow. So I'm going to take that down right away, about 230 or so. Make it a little bit wider because I could tell there was just more energy there. I'm going to take it down even further. So let's hear this again. So it's starting to sound more balanced and I'm, I don't want to take too much of the sort of weight of the signal out. If I took too much here, it might just start sounding really, really thin. We're just looking to improve it. So what I'm going to do is play it with the effect on and then I'm just going to mute the effect and we'll see if it sounds, if it sounds okay. So to me, in these headphones, the one with the EQ sounds a lot better. Now you'll probably get better results with different EQs, but basically this technique is the same no matter what you're using. You can just raise one of these tokens up, give it a narrow cue, and you're just looking for stuff that, or well, you're not looking, you're, you're listening for things that just sound odd. And then when you identify something that sounds wrong, you're just trying to reduce it, but I'm not trying to reduce too much like this is quite a lot here maybe you know minus 9 db it's going to be different maybe your resonances aren't so bad and you only need to take one or two db off them you really need to just keep comparing turn it on turn it off and uh, see whether you've sort of killed it and made it too thin and this really is all there is to it it's very simple you just need to make sure that you're not listening too loud so that you keep your hearing nice and fresh uh, so that you can do this technique effectively and usually the problems are in the low mid region just around about here between about 100 and about 400 frequencies that I hear all the time that are problems are usually about 120 hertz, 220 hertz, and usually about 300 to 350 hertz. Like those are usually really big problem areas in small sort of untreated home studios. You can also get problems with the high end. Sometimes at around about seven or eight K, there can be like sort of like a ringing sort of sound depending on your room size, but usually that won't detract too much from what's going on. And it's usually those low mid areas that are uh, that are the problem. I'm going to turn the, those effects off and now that we're a little bit more tuned into those frequencies I'm just going to play you this one more time just the unedited and then the edited stems to see whether you can really sort of hone in on those differences now. So let's just hear this. such nice guitar to listen to isn't it basically it just lets that guitar shine and someone might want that to still sound thicker and sound like less bright and if they want to they can just add an eq and boost some of those frequencies back cut the high end but whatever they do it's just in a much better position to make those decisions because when it was all boxy and boomy it was just competing with everything and you you didn't really have the clarity there hopefully this technique helps you out and as with any technique sometimes less is more sometimes you'll have something that doesn't need this on it maybe your guitar recording is already perfect so just be careful so just keep checking before and after to make sure that you haven't uh, killed the life out of your track and thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next video bye for now